What is up my dudes and welcome back to the channel. About a week ago we got word from a Japanese reporter that Sega was getting ready to announce something that would rival the announcement of the PlayStation 5. Now a lot of us got real giddy at the prospect of what this could be and yesterday we found out exactly what those announcements were. I'm not pleased. Um, the first one is a Sega Game Gear Mini, akin to the Game Boy Micro, but even smaller. That was already really small, but had a serviceable screen, something that you could actually play. This system screen is so tiny that the main way you're going to be able to play this is by getting an additional attachment that has a magnifying glass. It kind of reminds me of some of the silly attachments we used to get back in the 90s, but why? Why would you make it so small that the screen... I, I, I just can't. I can't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I'm a huge Sega fan. So I'm gonna get one. Or I was up until I found out what exactly these systems entail. Now there are several colors. And each color is a different system. It has different games on it. So you have to buy all of them to get all the games. Each one costs you roughly 50 US dollars. What the hell? That is, that, that's just ridiculous. I, I, don't, I don't understand Sega's reasoning for this, especially when you look at the Sega Genesis collection that you can buy on your PlayStation, your Switch, your, your Xbox. But I mean, the fact that I can buy it on my Switch makes it, you know, a, a portable game. That's the best way, in my opinion, to play it. But 55 games for the same price. No, less, sorry, $10 less. What the hell? And on sale, we're talking even lower numbers. But why would you, why would you make a system like this? Like I could understand. Uh, I mean, what they showed off were the Japanese games. Obviously, we're gonna get different games over here if it in fact makes it over to the United States. But what games will we get? I'm sure the kind of games we will see are your Shinobis, your Gunstar Heroes, uh, your Vector Mans, like. Castlevania Bloodlines, like I'm sure there will be some third-party games, hopefully, if we're lucky. But even still, Sega has enough games to give really nice libraries. But still, four games is so tiny that it doesn't really merit the price. And it, it, it just bugs me that they didn't think, well, why don't we come up with a cartridge system? Something that you could go into the store, buy one of these cartridges, and it's a mix of games. And those could individually be 20 or 30 bucks. I mean, depending on how many games you put on them, but why wouldn't you go to those lengths? Why wouldn't you try to figure something like that out? Even if it meant the system had to be a little bigger. This could have been a huge splash. And now it's just gonna be a novelty that'll wear off. You know, obviously depending on what games we get in the, uh, in the West, but I just, just seems like an, another opportunity kind of missed it feels almost like the PlayStation 1 classic you know they just didn't go the distance with the games and that's how this feels the system is incredibly tiny I don't know how it's gonna fit in my hands and then on top of that I'm gonna need something to magnify the image <sighs> just off to a bad start guys not not great I was really hoping that this announcement was gonna be something fantastic so up until today I thought that was the announcement and I was kind of just a little winded, kind of upset. Then I find out that there's more to it that I hadn't even realized. Get ready for it, guys. We're we're in for the future of gaming with Fog Gaming. Oh, you don't know what Fog Gaming is? It's Sega's approach to cloud gaming. Like, <laughs> I'm bewildered. You guys couldn't have been more creative with the name? You maybe made it more Sega branded? I don't know. It just feels really, really, really just cheeseball-y. The service is essentially being able to play arcade games at home. Now I'm excited for that in a sense because I love me some House of the Dead, I love all the snowboarding games and other winter sports games that Sega had a part in, but it's not something I was taking lightly because people were likening it to the announcement of the PlayStation 5. So there were a couple things that ran through my head. One, I mean the first thing that comes to the mind of any huge Sega fan 
is are they jumping back into first party? That is my ultimate dream. A lot of you think that I am a Nintendo only fan when in fact the love was quite evenly distributed between the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo and the 64 and the Saturn. Like, I loved the two of them. They both provided two very awesome, two very different experiences. So the idea of Sega coming back after having such a long break since the Dreamcast fills me with hope, <laughs> makes me happy and sad, but it it's not likely. I mean, if that was to happen, it would just change things. It would change things a lot. I probably would stop buying PlayStation. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. There's, there's a lot to Sega. If they came back and they meant it, like, they could really stand to, to change things, uh, change the, the landscape of the, of the industry. But to me, that's a big deal. I, I don't think these announcements even come close to <laughs> even a fraction of what the PlayStation 5 means. Another thing is, is like making your games available. Dreamcast games have not been widely available. Saturn games, not widely available. Uh, Genesis games, I would say, and, and Game Gear games, I would say, are, are more widely accessible. Uh, just because they're on the Nintendo eShops of the older systems, the 3DS and the Wii U. And through the Sega collection, you know, they've released a lot of Genesis games on the Switch. So that, that to me is nice, but like, it would be nice if we had access to it all. I want to be able to play Soul Calibur again. I mean, I have my Dreamcast. I keep all these systems, not, not just because I, you know, I am a collector. At heart, I am a collector, but it's also that I can play these games. They're games that'll never die in my soul. Games like Power Stone. I mean, I know they had releases on the PSP, but I just feel like these games shouldn't be hard to find to play again. <laughs> Especially that, like, there's just this gray area of Dreamcast games and Saturn games that we haven't seen. I mean, we got Panzer Dragoon a couple months ago, which was really nice, a great surprise, and it has me very, very hopeful for future revamps, remakes of games. Panzer Dragoon Saga comes to mind every time I think about this subject, but there's so much more, so much hidden potential with Sega IPs. Like, I really wish Sega would really just pull together and just remember what they stand for to this industry find themselves again. It's it's really quite sad. And I, you know, there was a part of me that was hoping that maybe Sony, as much as, you know, I prefer Nintendo. I mean, either way, it doesn't really matter if someone would buy Sega, make them a home within their company. I could see Sega blossoming once again. If Sega doesn't jump back into first party, I would love to see them working closely with a company like Sony, with a company like Nintendo. Great things, great things could happen from a partnership like that. I don't want to exclude Xbox, but I just don't think that Sega would find a very good home on Microsoft's home console. Though, having a company like Sega would probably expand their audience, would definitely expand their audience in Japan. Games like Persona, all those Atlas games, none of them would be on any other systems. They would just be on Microsoft systems, so Japanese people would want the system for that very reason. I just, I'm just kind of left underwhelmed, I guess. I am excited for the prospect of being able to play. I would like to see where this fog service is leading us. I would like to know more details about it and what I can expect from the service, but I'm not necessarily clamoring for the service. Until I know more, I'm not going to side one way or the other, though the prospect of what they're saying is nice. The second I saw House of the Dead 1, I, I've never played this game. Back in the day when I first got my Saturn, I wanted it, but by that time it was already a rare commodity and was already past $500 for a new game. Um, so even, even a used game was going to be $300. Plus, and, and I just didn't have that money. Still to this day, 35 years old almost, <laughs> and I haven't played this game. I need to, I need to. So in that respect, I'm very excited, but overall just, just disappointed. Um, I was really hoping for a, a bigger announcement, but anyway, those are my two cents on the subject. I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, tell a friend, if you know someone who would enjoy this kind of content and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy guys.